All right, all right, all right. This is Precision TV. My name is Desiree, of course, as you see, I have a special guest today that we are going to share and she's going to tell us exactly what she do, who she is. As you can see, uh, let me just uh, welcome her before doing anything else. Welcome. Hi, Desiree, thanks for having me. All right, so uh, before we get to the point, let me just a uh, little bit um, tell you, Kira, to introduce yourself. Uh, I don't want to introduce you and mess up with something. So welcome, and <laughs> I want you to introduce uh, to my uh, people. Yeah, so my name is Kira Street. Um, I am currently living in Boston, Massachusetts, although I've lived in many different places, Texas, Phoenix. And Massachusetts as well. Um, but I'm working as a UI UX designer and basically all my life I guess I've done creative things so writing just happens to be one of them that I did this time. Uh, but I make things, I crochet, I paint, I draw, I design. Mm -hmm. um, almost any creative thing you could probably think of I do or have done or want to learn. So that's me. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome. All right, thank you so much, Kira, for being with us, and we are very happy that you accepted our invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Yes, thank you for having me. Okay, so let's go to the point. Today we are going to uh, discover uh, all the secret that you are having to be able to write a book uh, like the one we uh, uh, we are going to take uh, to talk about. It's a nice book. Uh, if you haven't read this book, uh, we encourage you guys to read it. It's uh, uh, it called Somewhere Between Here and uh, Between Here and There, right? Yes, that's so right. It's a nice book written by Kira Street. Uh, Kira, tell me a little bit about this book. Yeah, so this book, um, it's been almost a, maybe a little over a year long project uh, for me. And it came about with me kind of realizing one that I love to write, of course, and I wanted to you know keep up that uh, creative outlet. Mm -hmm. But also, one of the things that I really value, especially in my spiritual walk, is just hearing other people's stories. You know, listening to people's testimonies, listening to where God has brought them from and, you know, how he's continuing to lead them in their walk with him. And a lot of the times I kind of felt, you know, maybe because it's me, I'm just like, I don't have a story to tell. I'm just me. Um, I can't, I don't have anything that's amazing um, like the other people that I'm hearing stories from. Uh, but I would say probably about a year, year and a half ago or so, I was looking through a couple of the Bible studies that I wrote down. And one of the ways that I like to prepare for them is I like to just write them all out, almost like in an essay form. And what I realized is that a lot of them kind of, I would put in my own anecdote, my own spin on the study that, uh, that I was writing just mm. to find a lesson that I learned. And when I read that, I was like, this is, this is my story. I can put this in a book. I can exactly. really share this with others and, you know, not be afraid to share it, you know? Mm. Um, so that's kind of the, the birth of Somewhere Between Here and There. So basically, you want to uh, uh, tell us uh, <clears throat> the reason why you choose this uh, name or, or this title was because you had the experience of of you like your own experience yes, yeah right and the title of it itself it's i would say the book is even though it's out there and published and everything it's still unfinished because i'm still here my story is still going on and here and there that's basically like my birth to, if not my you know physical birth as well as my spiritual birth of accepting god to there, which is when, you know, I'll finally be with him, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the new earth and the new, in the new heaven. So oh. that's kind of why it's called somewhere between here and there. All right. Uh, we are going to discover or explore it. Um, we're not going to go to all the chapters that, uh, that it's included, but uh, before we go to into uh, the book by itself, uh, will you tell us uh, why, uh, 
is is your uh, is a writing it's 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 a, it's your passion oh, you just taught us that you are a designer did you go to school for designing i know that you went to university of texas but uh, tell us about how you end up being a writer is it just because you love it uh, it's your passion it's your career it's why is this that? this has happened it's like we, we want to know exactly what makes you to write the book right so writing itself I, I never went to school for it it's definitely not my profession but it's something um kind of like my design work and my creative work it's something that i kind of found myself loving to do like i would keep diaries i would write short stories i would write poems you know that kind of thing so kind of discovering that skill and that love for writing uh led me to be like you know i want to be able to you know write something larger how can i write and organize something larger mm -hmm. um and that led to the book all right so uh, uh let's go to the book by itself when you start your book with your first chapter you're saying getting to know him yes it's getting confused to me when i was starting reading your book you end up feeling like, oh, why, why she choose this chapter to call it getting to know him? Mm -hmm. Who are you talking about here? Yes. So here, kind of like I said before, the, where the somewhere between here is, you know, the beginning of my birth of getting to know God. That's why I started with that chapter. It's getting to know who God is and who he really is. Um, because, and as you read that chapter, you'll kind of see that, how I thought of him changed. Um, I would think of him, I used to think of him as just like, you know, an intangible, like uh, disconnected, unattached being who just told me to do things and then went away uh, unless I, you know, did something bad. But I later, you know, came to the conclusion based on the you know, studies, based on talking with mentors that, mm -hmm. you know, God is, he, he wants to be with us. And I know in Exodus, I believe 25, 8, that's where he wants, says to the Israelites that he wants to build the sanctuary that, that he may dwell with them. And he wants the same with us. God wants to dwell intimately with us. And that was kind of the realization that I wanted to start my book off with to show, you know, just how my relationship with God is just flourishing just by getting to know him and his character. Amen. Amen. That's, uh, that's uh, something good that uh, uh, I think it might inspire many people, including myself, because you feel like uh, before I even do anything, I knew God first mm -hmm. as someone who gave me life, as someone who gave me path, as someone who, right. who is doing uh, everything for me. Right. All right. Uh, th that's a good to know, because when I was reading this, I was like, why this chapter? But when you go to the chapter, uh, I think it, by itself, you can say, oh, yeah, he was talk uh, she was talking about God. So Kira, tell us mm -hmm. about some of the experience that uh, it really makes you write this book. Because as you mentioned, it's about you normally. It's about mm -hmm. your story since you were born until whenever you are going because as you mentioned as well you say that the book is still going on but tell us which uh, experience the most experience which makes you to feel like oh why why can't i write on this mm -hmm. oh there's so many <laughs> um and there's only nine chapters so mm -hmm. uh you know of course there's not you know so many experiences but um, I would say one, and I just want to say a trigger warning for those who need it um, yeah. for an assault, uh, you know, content and everything. Um, but kind of the main reason was just so I was sexually assaulted when I was little. Oh. And kind of getting, you know, just getting past, like not really getting past that, but talking about it, really yeah. kind of writing it down talking about it with people, um, writing it in this book, it, it's almost like a bit of a healing process in a sense. And that, that was kind of, I wouldn't say like the main event, but definitely a, a catalyzing or 
just like a major event um, that led to the writing of this book. So um, use... because okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, because it's it was a huge thing that happened, and it's definitely you know colored in some ways how I view the world, um, and it also even colored some ways that I viewed God. And when you read that chapter, you'll kind of see, you know. Um, how I grew from that and how God led me through that and continues to lead me through that. Amen. Amen. So will you say that uh, writing that story of yours will feel, will you feel healed by yourself by just putting out to share with others? Uh, will you think, uh, will you feel that it's going to heal you at the same time healing somebody else? who might experience the same aspect as yours? Right, it's, it's definitely a part of the process. I don't know if it'll be, you know, a complete healing process just in writing this book, but mm. I think it's definitely an important part of the process because it's something that is so easily hidden, you know, mm -hmm. um, and just not talked about. And because it's hidden and locked away, you know, it just, it eats away at you, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And having that, that out in the open, having people know that can indeed help others be, you know, more, you know, be willing to share their story and also help others who've gone through the same thing. That's right. That's right. So uh, before, uh, before we leave this chapter, because that's, uh, that's the most thing that uh, I feel like it makes you writing this book because it talks about you experience the first experience like the one you just said but there are some couple verses from the bible that you use like the one that i saw in james uh chapter 4 verse 2 uh, why will you compare this verse to the uh, to that experience sorry you were breaking up a little bit could you say that again yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I think it's a connection. I, I was uh, I was uh, reading this chapter and I end up getting to page uh, 58, I think. Uh, now this chapter where uh, there there is a Bible verse, uh, James chapter mm -hmm. four verse two, where he says immediately uh, it came to mind that we receive not because we ask not as small as the dream was. So when I was reading here, I feel like there's something that you want to combine and compare those two things to make sense. Why will you use this verse? So for that verse, that was in the, the very first chapter where I talked about, you know, getting to know God. Mm. And um, one of the things that I, you know, that I would have, one of the ways that I would think about God was that, or even my parents, and that, that's kind of what that chapter details was that, you know, what can, what can I ask him? Like, I don't, I don't know what to, what to ask God for. And, I, and he's, you know, I don't, I'm going to, I don't know what to ask him for. Uh, and I think at the end of that very first chapter, um, I'm, I think I outlined a, a devotional that I had watched a while back where, you know, if you, if you met a millionaire and, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can't, they came up to you and they said, we're going to give you whatever you want. Just ask me for anything. What would you start with? Um, you wouldn't that's, start with like, you know, question. going to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> it is exactly. a hard question. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. But you wouldn't start with, you know, just, you know, going to the grocery store. Probably you might not start with, you know, um, I don't know, like buying sheets for your bed because they're a millionaire, you know, they could afford that. Mm -hmm. You probably start with a house. You probably start with, you know, managing your student loan debt. You might start with, you know, like rent for a year. I don't know. But with God, I mean, because he is so infinite, you know, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He, mm -hmm. uh, he has riches beyond, beyond our imagination when we come to him because he loves us and because he wants what's best for her, what's best for us. If we ask according to his will, we can ask big. We don't have to just, you know, go to that surface level asking. We can ask him for the, you know, our dreams, ask him about our goals, talk with him about, you know, our hopes. Mm. Um, 
and as a God who loves us, he will, and who knows what's best for us, he will give us what's best for us. Amen. That's right. That's right. Uh, we ask the same thing uh, <clears throat> myself, like people, many of us does not have this uh, inspiration of writing. And uh, as you mentioned uh, last time when I called you, you say that, you know what, everybody, anyone can write a book because we have, uh, everybody has experience. Everybody has yep. a testimony. So yep. when you say that uh, writing this book, uh, were you inspired by someone as well? Because I, I didn't touch base on that one, but every time that uh, you are a writer or doing something, sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm getting this from that. Maybe tomorrow I will be writing a book. I'll be like, oh, we, I, I was encouraged by Kira. So who, who inspired you to feel like you can do, uh, you can write a book? Yes. Um, I don't know if I have a specific inspiration, but I mean, honestly, like probably every person that I've heard a testimony from, and that's a lot of people, mm. um, just hearing those stories and especially, you know, just seeing stories on, you know, it's not a religious thing, but Humans of New York, like seeing that whole, you know, processing the Brandon, the admin of that, just go through and ask people about their stories and you see them share their intimate parts of their lives and their hopes, their dreams, their fears. Um, and it really, sh it really inspired me to be, to, to know that, you know, just all those people that he's interviewing, they have a story. If, and if all those people he's interviewing have a story, I have a story. If all the people that I'm hearing give their testimonies, mm -hmm. I have a testimony. Um, <clears throat> And I also can share that and bless someone else with it. Amen. That's right. That's right. So uh, let's uh, maybe we can talk about the entire book. Uh, we mm -hmm. can't have that time, but still, uh, when you you were writing this book, finishing up with this, you had uh, you had this in your mind. Who is your like a target audience on this book? So I'm really wanting to reach out to young adults who maybe are, you know, just, you know, they're in their spiritual life, maybe they're struggling, maybe they're just trying to find, you know, some, like a testimony to, to, to reach out to, trying to find someone to relate to, that is, mm -hmm. um, because I know a lot of, I know a lot of some of the things that I was, um, you know, kind of, kind of struggling with in a way, is just finding other young adults to relate to, uh, and I kind of want to, help at least provide a little bit just in sharing my story that hey i'm a christian and i've gone through this i'm a i'm a christian and i've had this question i've had doubts i've been angry at god um, and just kind of show a way that i've you know gone through that and how god has led me through that and hopefully inspire someone else to to study and do the same mm -hmm. uh, will you say that uh, <clears throat> if i take my time and read the entire book what do you think uh, I will get from? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think after you read this book, what I would want you to get from it is one, to know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And nice. two, two, to know that you also have a story and that you can also share it. Um, nice. And I would say three kind of related to that, you know, knowing that you have a story, um, giving you that kind of inspiration to reflect on that story and to really just kind of rest in that story. Um, because I feel like so often we just kind of, you know, don't really consider our past or just we're always looking forward, which is mm -hmm. fine, of course, like, you know, look forward, but take the time to reflect on where you've come from and where you're and where you are. Um, so that way, you know, you can not only better move forward, but also bring someone else with you. Amen. Amen. So guys, I will encourage you to read the book. And uh, Kira, will you tell us exactly where we can get this book? Yes, you can get it on my website. Uh, that's Kira. The book, sorry, the book page itself is on uh, www.kirastreet.com slash somewhere dash between. Uh, so that's the actual URL, um, but that's my 
that's the book page you can get on Kindle. You can also get it on, you know, just download a regular EPUB file from my website as well. Uh, and it's only five bucks. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I will encourage everybody to read uh, to read the book. Um, it's uh, it's not a, it's not expensive and it's not cheap. Uh, but tell us about the price. <laughs> oh, the price? Oh, yes, it's only five bucks. Oh, five dollars. So when oh. you get to Amazon, I already have it, guys. It's a nice book. I was able to read almost uh, chapter one and all the introduction. It was awesome. I really appreciate the effort that you put uh, into this book. Uh, guys, if you go to Amazon, you can find this book. And um, five dollars, it's it's not um, too much. It's it's okay. It's it's okay. good uh, compared to the message that uh, Kira has uh, put into this book. Uh, five dollars, you can have it uh, on your candle. Then anytime, whatever you are, you can still enjoying all the testimony uh, that Kira was able uh, to share with us. Again, uh, let, let's see. Uh, uh, can you repeat the website where they can find it uh, when they're not uh, probably want to go to Amazon and buy it? Yes. So again, that's on my website, kirastreet.com slash somewhere dash between. Mm -hmm. And that's the book website. And you'll find links to buy it, uh, both the EPUB file as well as Kindle, if that's what you want to do. So Kira, when you said your target was young adults, if I give to my mom or someone watching us right now, uh, if, <laughs> if he decides to give to his daddy, what, what's going to happen? Do you think he can't get anything from it? No, I don't think, I, I think <laughs> they can still get something from it for sure. I mean, like, just because, you know, it's, a, I'm a young adult, you know, telling it for a young adult audience doesn't mean that anyone older or younger can't get anything exactly that's that was the story my... regardless of where we are exactly that was my point so either you are young or whoever you are there is a lot that you can learn from this book and i encourage everyone who is uh, following precision tv right now to go to amazon and just type uh, uh somewhere uh, between here and there uh, you will see this beautiful book it's not a long book Mm -hmm. It's medium. F for you guys who uh, like to read, this is the best book to buy. And I think the reason why you say uh, young adults, it's because you, you are young, right? <laughs> I am a young adult, this is true. <laughs> All right. Uh, before uh, maybe we finish with our interview, Kira, uh, I'm going to ask you just a, a question that I, I always ask people. Uh, mm -hmm. Why... Uh, what what do you think the young adults should be doing this time? Like, give them some advice that you feel like this might be constructive uh, a message for them. What should young adults be doing at this time? Mm -hmm. I think young adults should be, I mean, we should be doing a lot of things, I think. Um, but I would say the one thing that comes to mind is bringing up and mentoring those who are younger than you. Um, because, you know, the kids, the teenagers, you know, they, they also need guidance. Um, so definitely those who are younger than you, those who are looking up to you, um, reach out to them and, you know, guide them, mentor them as you know, best you can, however you can. Nice, nice. Okay, putting outside or publish a book like this, it's not easy, but you were able to do that. Uh, uh, how will you encourage me or anybody else who uh, has this vision of feeling like I have something to do, but this, I don't know how to do it. What will you tell him? I would definitely tell them, you know, start start researching of course i mean i know that's what i did and i found out that self-publishing was the way was a way to go mm -hmm. so that this book is self-published and it, it made it a little bit easier especially <laughs> the publishing front um but definitely research and also keep moving keep working at you know what you want to put out into the world and just um yeah don't stop working for what you for what you're passionate about 
Um, so long as you, you know, keep researching, keep working, keep doing what you want to do, um, there will be a way that it can, you know, that it can be out into the world. Among this uh, book, uh, I think I would say it's combined with different uh, uh, essay and testimonies from you. Uh, which one will you feel like this was the best experience I have, I have had in my life? Because the one you taught us was the most hard that you had uh, being uh, sexually assaulted was not good experience that's obvious mm -hmm. so which one was good for you and feel like oh this is a beautiful experience that i can share with the people into this book uh i would say the, probably the one of the most beautiful is uh in chapter five i think it's chapter five it's my experience on just knowing the sabbath and that's the one that has given me so much joy uh, because before I would see it as a burden, as like I have to do all these stuffy things and go to all these stuffy places. Um, but I learned just how much of a joy it is just to rest, just to rest in God and not be worried about, you know, weekly worries or weekly work, um, but just really take the time to really be thankful um, and reflect on who God is and as well as be a blessing to others because you know allowing others to rest and giving them that opportunity too so i would say that's the one that i think i've had the most joy from that's nice oh uh, are we are we be curious when you say knowing the sabbath but i know that at the same time that other people who doesn't know the sabbath mm -hmm. and uh, probably they want to know but they don't know exactly where they can find the truth and the reason to feel like, oh, this is a day of rest. Did you also include in your chapter? If yes, can you just tell us a little bit which makes you to feel like, yes, this makes me happy to know that this is a Sabbath day, it's a rest day of God. It's probably, I don't think it's in the book proper, but on my website that I mentioned before, I did include a free Bible study guide. So if you, you know, either after or before you read the book, if anyone buys it, they can also download this free Bible study guide that I have that goes through each chapter, outlines the, the um, Bible verses and the Bible stories that I studied myself before writing that chapter. So that way people can, of course, do their own Bible study, but also reflect on their own life in the context of that, uh, of that topic. And the Sabbath is in there, so you can find it there. All right, guys. Thank you so much for following us. This was Kira. Kira, thank you so much for being with us today. And I hope that next time, if I invite you, you're going to make it. Yes. Would love to come back. All right, guys. Thank you so much. This was Desiree on Precision TV, of course. Uh, we are very happy to have you. And Kira, uh, is there anything else you want to say about the book, uh, reminding your audience or anything that you feel uh, they have to know this before we end this call? <laughs> um, I just want to repeat the one thing that I wanted everyone to get out of it. Just know that you are not alone and that you have a story to share. Amen. You are not alone. You have a story to share, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you guys for watching us. Uh, very soon we're going to put you and give you another beautiful interview. Thank you, Kira. Thank you, Desiree. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.